Hello, welcome back to What Remains of Edith Finch. We're just going to continue on where we left off. Um, I think I had to go through here. Alright. Meal ready to eat. Oh yeah, and right off the bat, uh, sorry for the for the audio quality. It's not the best I know, but uh, I still have to set up my mic in a way that it, it doesn't After give Sam me died. in a way that it doesn't give me weird audio lags, and it's it's a whole kind of annoying deal. I don't know. I'm not gonna get into it. My mom and Edie got really close. They both lost a lot. Finch control. The diesel is so cool. Oh. Gregory. Dawn and Gus. Another one of these sealed doors. Is that actually the house? Finch household, it actually is. No playing outside without permission, no answering door for strangers. That's cool. Okay, let's look at these two things right here. Look at no, 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 don't no. Lawsuit has been filed against you. You have 20 calendar days after the summons is served on you to file a written response to the attached complaint slash petition. Okay, okay. Well, divorce contract. Dear mm. Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. I think he saw things the rest of us don't. Oh. Oh. That is cool. You reminded me so much of Calvin. I want to get him all. Come on. Lost in his imagination. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Whatever it was he saw.
I can't move anymore though. Oh. I wish you could have told us. Oh no. About the world he saw. Sam. <laughs> Fucking hell. <clears throat> yeah, so there were like divorce papers got filed because the son died. He drowned. It's all so dark and grim, but, um, like the story and everything, but it's made in such a cute way. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet. A poem for Gus. A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. <laughs> my father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her. We don't need a stepmom, were the words that I... I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. came dad ordered him to come, come here but Gus declined and as a sign held up his middle finger <laughs> the wind picked up and panicked geese appeared and quickly went but all the humans did that day was go inside the tent came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, make the music louder.
I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. Mm. Okay, okay. Can I go up here? Yes, I can, okay. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. Oh, this looks cool. Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. Copy passport for volunteer center. Pack. Fly to India. Dawn Finch. Dawn and Sanjay. So. So Dawn is our our mother. I'm not sure. Let me see. There's some places to visit. Majors, English, teaching, geology. Okay, okay, she, she came around. She houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. Okay. Dawn and Sanjay. Oh, okay, let me look Look at this. Dawn. Okay, and that's why uh, the Sanjay is just the little leaf, because he isn't... Uh, how do you say it? I don't know. Whatever. <clears throat> okay. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. Everything slowly comes together. Whoa. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. And to see kids in the house again. Hmm. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. You can always see the old house. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal. A little school here? Homeschool? For Edith, I'm assuming that's... That's us? Mrs. Finch. I don't know. I don't think I would like homeschool. I didn't like school, but... <laughs> I don't think I would, would have liked homeschool that much more. But it didn't last. Milton's 10th birthday when Edie gave him a castle that's a normal thing to do here have a castle 
That's cool though. Milton. Milton is alive. After Milton disappeared. The only thing he left oh. behind was a room full of paintings. Hmm. Right, we don't know if Milton is alive or dead. He just disappeared. An artist for sure. <laughs> Interesting. I think Edie was happy to finally have another painter in the family. the music it's so good Milton magic Finch paintbrush the magic paintbrush That's creative. Oh, 2003. I was when Milton disappeared. Or is it just when, yeah, that's when he disappeared, I guess. So he went into the painting. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. That's the door. Hmm. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. Okay. Oh, come on. The question is where to next? Oh, up here. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Oh, that's why all the, the like, fish stuff is <laughs> down there. That's, oh, I wanted to go up there, I guess. That won't work. Let's look through. Everyone always told me Whoa. to stay out of Lewis's room. Except Lewis. We got another achievement. I guess I look through all peepholes now. smelled very very familiar <laughs> that part of him lived on I wonder why but it looks cool looks chill oh we got a PlayStation or I guess a Wonderland turbo high school diploma 
Louis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, Whoa. I believe Lewis oh. first noticed the monotony of his daily life. Damn. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... Huh? Wander. Oh, oh, I'm controlling with both. Oh, that's, that's confusing. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small, imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. And something moved. Bats and toads. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. Oh, this is so cool. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. So awkward to control though with both hands. But he found something more. Whoa. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Yeah, whole he's, new Lewis. he's in another world right now. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. Ah, what's up? On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. And songs for them to play. talked about starting a band and he was always humming something every day his imagination grew stronger he no longer spoke at the cannery but his chopping was as reliable as ever then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. <laughs> They begged him to stay. 
but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Louisville. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis. Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. He heard rumors of a handsome queen. Let's go. Handsome queen. The queen was on her own quest for sinister servants. Sinister serpents. He followed the sound of her. Silver harp. My God. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. He was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. This is so interesting and Fucking awesome. So well made. Oh, that must be my lucker. Okay. Began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Okay. What am I supposed to do? Go up here. I still thought I could save him. 
even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. Your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Fuck off. That was so cool. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. Wait, so who's left actually? Oh, Dawn, so our mother and uh, Edie, our grandmother. I don't know if we, we're going to learn more about Sanjay, Kai, and Ingeborg, but I don't think so. Maybe. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. Sanjay Kumar. Disaster relief. that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. Okay. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now was to tell you about that last night. Oh, so this is my room then. Ugh, I'm kind of scared. These have <laughs> these have, stories have been getting more and more and more bleak. Why am I so? Oh, I'm crawling. day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. 
Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Eden, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last... I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. So cozy. Or that Edie had a key to it. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning, okay? Oh no. History of the Finches by Edie Finch, the grandmother. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. Oh, yeah. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. Just keep walking straight, okay? I got turned around. Oh, come on. No, I didn't. <laughs> Seeing things. Ooh. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. came back to me or maybe I came back to them things I can't explain but that I need you to try and Edith what are you doing in here it's mine Edith mom you're gonna rip it let go I kicked and screamed, but Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. Oh no! The next morning, the van came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. A 
few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while, and then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes. And appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. Am I getting born right now? I just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself. But I I'm guess getting... if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. Damn. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask. But I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck. Oh, right. It's... It's ours. Oh, my God. That was, that was brilliant. For Shirley Dellis. Rest in peace. That was amazing. Ian Dellis. That was so unique and interesting. I, I love this. Honestly, one of the best uh, like indie or adventure type games I've ever played, for sure. But how did she die then? Because the baby got born, but she, okay, maybe she died at childbirth or some. Jonathan's name? Maybe she died, died during childbirth or something, and that's why she wrote the journal. Jeff Russo, composer, big, big W. 
Great soundtrack. I have a feeling I'll be listening to that <laughs> soon. <laughs> This was so much fun to play, but <laughs> if I if I knew that it would only be like 40 more minutes yesterday, I would have played through it. <laughs> uh, whatever, then it's like one longer part and one sh uh, shorter part. That's fine too. Amazing. That was that was beautiful. Yeah, now I can replay the game. It's that was it. I think I've said like enough nice things already <laughs> even during during the the gameplay and everything. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's it. Thank you for watching. <laughs> I hope y'all had a great time as well. Uh, I really enjoyed myself. Um, I don't know what project I'll be working on next. Um, we'll see. Thank you for watching. Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye.